Hi, and welcome to 2017 Paper 2, uh, Question 11 of the Judicial Higher Level. So, I suggest you pause the video or just have a go at um, the question. I have a few hints down here, okay? Um, assuming you're back. If you want a copy of this set of notes with the work answers, whatever, built in, I just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So, Question 11. The quarter geometry diagram below shows the lines Q, R, S, and T. And you'll notice there's no gradients, you're not given any X or Y values. Okay, so it's a matter of, well, I suppose figuring out about the lines from just their shapes. Okay, uh, you're told that Q is parallel to S. Okay, so it's Q and S there. And R is parallel to T. So R and T are parallel. You're asked then to identify from the equation for the first three what their lettering is and then for the last one to write down what the equation of the line is. So basically we're talking here about using y equals mx plus c. Okay, the slope intercept form of a line. Okay, there's different ways of expressing a line. This is one way. In this form, if it's 1y equals everything else, the number in front of the x is the slope the number at the end is where it crosses the y-axis. Okay, so first you can tell here is that with Q and R, they're crossing in the positive part of the y-axis. So they have a plus value for the C. The S and the T are crossing in the negative part of the y-axis, so they have a negative C value. So you can tell here that this is either S or T. Okay, we're looking then, let's see at the first one here, that's with y equals x plus 3 has a slope of 1, okay, the number of the x. This one here, which also is either q or r, r, has a slope of 2. So the one that's steeper will have the bigger slope. So q and r, q is steeper, so that would have to be q. And it crosses the positive uh, y-axis. Uh, now r will also have a positive, so this would be r. This is the smaller slope. Okay, well, that leaves just one, obviously. So, what? Q or S? This has to be T. Okay. And then, now, if T is the one with the, I suppose, the, well, between T and S of the smaller slopes, okay, it's Y equals, now, something X. Okay, it'll be a negative 3 because it's parallel. Okay, to um, two is parallel to s is parallel to um, t. Okay, and it would have a slope of one because say two because s would be the steeper one. T is already used up. Uh, has a the, the smaller slope, the less less steep slope. S is steeper, and it's parallel to q. Q is the slope of three. Sorry, two rather. So the slope there is two. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense there, okay? Now, just the hint on here hopefully helps. Okay, I'll just kind of gone through it here at the top. Now, move on. So that's the answers there. Okay, should be the same. So yeah, it's the same. Okay, and I've just, I suppose I've put in here some help to figure out what I was doing. So that's part A. Now, part B then says, use algebra to find the point of intersection of the line y equals x minus 3 and y equals 2x plus 3. Okay, now before we do anything, okay, this is not really necessary for this question, but I'm going to put a little, I'm going to try to draw them. Uh, this crosses at minus 3, so if that was, each box is a unit, that's minus 3. Okay, has a slope of 1, so it goes up 1 for every 1 it goes across, so we'll go through all those points there. Hopefully I can kind of do it here on the oak. Okay, a bit off, but whatever, you get the idea. The next one, okay, crosses at plus 3. Okay, and has a slope of 2. Okay, so it would be going up faster. It'd be going up 2 for every one it's going across. So it would be something like this. I'm going, going on forever. So they're not going to intersect this side because they're getting farther apart. If I continue those two lines, we're looking at somewhere there. Now, that's a negative x value and negative y value. So your answer should be something like negative x and negative y. So if we don't get that, we've done something wrong in our calculation. Now, this is, if you ever see this kind of question, 
do you see point of intersection? This is simultaneous equations. Okay, now there's, so we go through it now. I have two different methods here are illustrated. One is the elimination method, and one is called the substitution method. Okay, with the elimination method, I'll go through both of them. You have to put the two equations on top of each other. Now, some are called equation one and equation two. Okay, just for clarity. And do that here just so from explaining it, it makes make sense. I want to make uh, the one variable equal in size but opposite in sign. So when I join the two equations together, uh, they cancel. Okay. At the moment, if I'm just looking at equation one, I can never solve that because there's two unknowns. With equation two, I can never solve that because there's two unknowns. But if I can combine them and eliminate one of the unknowns, I'm left in the equation of one unknown which I can solve. Okay, so I've done it here. I've made the first equation, I've doubled it, and I've multiplied it across by a negative, so I'm negative 2. So it changes the signs here, because 1y becomes negative 2y, 1x becomes negative 2x, minus 3 becomes neg plus 6, uh, negative 3 by negative 2 is positive 6. Now, I haven't changed the equation 2, because I wanted to achieve this situation, where the x's were opposite in sign, about the same size. Therefore, they cancel. If you join the minus 2y plus y gives you minus 1y, 6 and 3 gives you 9. So minus y equals 9, but I want what y is, not minus y. Okay, so I change the signs both sides, or just swap them around, and I end up with y equals negative 9. Okay, now I have one of the unknowns. So I can pick either equation. Now, I would suggest pick the one that's easiest. So I pick equation 1, and I put minus 9 in instead of y. And I'm left now with an equation of one unknown here, so I can solve it. Bring the negative 3 across the equal. It was subtracting on the right. becomes added on the left. Do that in the sum. Minus 9 plus 3 is minus 6. So x is minus 6. So my two points there are minus 6 on the x, minus 9 on the y. And if we go back to my diagram here, it kind of looks 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yeah. Looks somewhere along there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, 7, 8, 9, okay. It's Probably, they probably meet up somewhere just around here. It's, it's, there's no red, red flags being raised, okay? Now, the substitution method, okay, is a little bit different, okay? And both of them are effective. Just slight different scenarios, you might want to prefer one or the, over the other. But if you see the first equation here, I say it's saying y equals something. The second equation is saying y equals something different. But if y's are equal, aren't these equal? Okay, if the left-hand side is equal, the right-hand side can be, or can be equal, must be equal. So if I, if I realize that, I can put them equal to each other. Now it's an equation of one unknown. So solve it, bring the x across, becomes negative going across the equal. Then neg the positive 3 here becomes negative going across the equal. So you end up with negative 3, negative 3, so subtraction. That's negative 6. Uh, 2x take away x is 1x. So I found my x value. Again, use one of the equations here. So I've used the first one. And I put negative 6 instead of x, so y equals negative 6, negative 3. That's that one there. I know it's hard to see as it crossed off a little bit. Uh, negative 6, negative 3 is negative 9. So again, I've got this exact same answer as the, as the other method, uh, just a little bit differently. So that's part B. Okay, now part C here says the line L is a vertical line. So it means go straight up. It cuts the line y equals x minus 3 at the point A. It cuts the line y equals x plus 3 at the point B. Find the distance AB. Okay, now if I was to draw that, okay, now the, the, they're both the same slopes, so they're parallel, okay, they have a slope of 1, so they're going up 1 unit for every 1 they go across. This one starts at negative 3, so somewhere down here, okay, I'm just going to guesstimate it, something like that. Uh, this one starts at plus 3, so somewhere up here, I'm kind of guesstimating again, something like that. Uh, it doesn't look parallel. Now, at some point, it doesn't really matter, okay, I don't think. Um, see down here, it says if point A and directly below it, you have a uh, point B. That's the uh, point A, point B. And we're asked to find the distance between the two of them, okay? And I've just realized I have this drawn on using a graphing package, so it's much more clear than my attempt. And that's the two lines drawn. You have the green line, y is equal to x plus 3. So you see there, it's crossing at 3. And it's going up one unit, going across one unit. So this is just done very well, because it's a package. You have the y is equal to x minus 3. Now, if you think about it, a and b, if that was a and b, 
okay? They're always going to be the same distance apart, because it's parallel. You have to realize that because the slopes are the same. It's three units, you just see what goes on the, on the axis. It's three units there, and three units there, okay? To that point there. Three and three is six. So they'll always be six units apart, um, because they are parallel. If you understand the logic here, okay, it's easy, but it's a, a very different question that you might, might, um, I have seen before, okay? Anyway, so that's, that's that. Thanks very much. I think that's the last question. That's question 11. See you on question 12.